You did with Brad Phillips. Look at this P39 amazing Aero Cobra 2 racing Cobra from FMS. We're going to see how this thing does. It's a beautiful sunset. Second thoughts for us. Take off last deployed 3200 or a smart pack. And I can't remember. Does this one have thrust reverse? No, no it so. doesn't. Okay, here goes nothing. Holy cow, that thing is speedy. I forget. It's been so long since we flew it. But look how gorgeous that thing is, guys. Looks like a bit of a silhouette right now. But we're gonna bring it over into the bowl. Oh, yes. Oh, body. They say racing cobra, and I say, yes, please. They weren't kidding. No, they weren't. Here we go, racing downhill. <laughs> Sounds like it's about to break the sound barrier. <laughs> a couple clicks of trim on the rudder. Guys, I gotta say, beautiful sunset here. Love the way this plane flies. It's fast, you gotta stay in the throttle to keep it in the air. But I mean, look how stable that thing is. Guys, we're not even fighting anything here, folks. If you wanna get into a fast racer, this and the Voodoo P51 are great choices. That is a bigger airplane by quite a little bit though, just mm -hmm. to be clear, that is an 1100. This is 980. It's not even a meter wingspan. And look how gorgeous the thing flies. Generally, small planes like this do not fly gorgeous, and they sure as heck don't use a 3200 4S, folks. Okay. Full landing flaps coming out. We're just going to slow it down for you. Look at those beautiful droopers. Okay, there we go. We're into the takeoff flaps now. Camera crew and I are going to go over by the bull so we can get the light behind us. Perfect. Oh, man, that's gorgeous. Lots of rudder. Just cut it right overhead. We, of course, are involved in the flight demo, so we can do that. And then right up. Look at the ops, guys. Almost unlimited. So cool. Do a little air show for the passers-by. So if you guys are in an area where people complain about airplanes, you're in the wrong area. Move. So what people like airplanes. That's where cool people are, like me. But honestly, I gotta say, look at the beautiful sunset, no less. I gotta say, I love the way this plane flies. It's definitely, you have to be flying it a lot more actively than other choices. But same is true for small planes, folks. When you have a small plane, you're gonna tend to have to be on the sticks a little bit harder. And it's not dead calm. The atmosphere has been pretty upset today. We had some thunderstorms and things that were all over the place. In fact, we kind of thought we were going to get hit. We never did. This ESC has got to be so pissed at me right now because I am just riding it hard. I'm going to get out of it and just cool the ESC down and but just let it look beautiful. It has racing in its name. Isn't that how everybody's going to fly it? Full landing flaps? Um, yeah, pretty much. But honestly, the reason that we have such a big battery in here is not because we want a lot of capacity. It's because that helps us get the CD right. And to be honest, I love the way this plane flies. And I love the way it looks up against that greenery. Yeah. And you know, some of these planes we reviewed in like April, it's so funny because look how much different it looks around here now. Yeah. Even now, the ups are insane. Okay. Even with that battery getting lower. Oh yeah, battery's gotta be like pretty much toasty. I got one minute left on the timer and yet it's kind of acting like it's gonna die. Okay, I guess we'll bring it in and land it then. Okay. There it is guys. Oh yeah, terrible landing by yours truly, Brian Phillips IC. Now, I just wanna talk about something. That was so weird, I swear I looked down and it said one minute but it was like time was standing still and it was one, zero, zero. And I felt like in my head, I counted to 10. Now granted, I didn't count to 10. That was probably my life flashing before my eyes. But what I wanna do is I wanna get this thing back up in the air and provide for you a better landing. Cause rock hard tires do tend to cause these things to bounce, but they can be brought in nicely. 
if you're not an idiot like I was just then. So we're gonna try this again. I forget how nice this thing lands. I'm in takeoff flap setting. There's just a little teeny tiny bit of wind and we are going to push it to the limit for you. Okay. There we go. There we go. Oh yeah, plenty of power to get in the air. And then we're just gonna bring it around and actually land at the same direction there. Actually the opposite direction. Hey, camera crew, you good? Mm -hmm. Okay, relaxing the throttle. Gear should be out. We're gonna bring it over by the killing zone. Pull any flaps out. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to go around because your wonderful host screwed that one really bad. Okay, flaps coming out. Gear are already out. Slowing it down as much as possible. Staying away from our cherry tree and the eagle killer slash fox killer. Oh yeah! And off the end of the runway. But that's okay because that plane is fun to land. But it has rock hard tires and no spring loaded oleos. Let's go look at that closer. By the way, if you guys are enjoying this content and you want to help us out, smash the like button right now and let's talk about this plane and how it could be yours by following the links in the video description below. All you have to do is just go right below where the video is. If you're on a desktop, it's super easy. If you're on mobile, you have to expand that thing. It's really annoying, by the way. <laughs> but anyway, let's check this out. Oh yeah, P39 Aero Cobra. Look at all the details, absolutely gorgeous, but look at the knot spring-loaded oleos and rock hard tires all i'm gonna say is even though they are rock hard you can actually generate a pretty decent landing with this plane but just keep in mind you have to keep your speed up because it does fly fast and it feels kind of like this if you were to take the weight and put it down here i feel like it would fly better but you can't on every plane the dihedral is helpful but it's not going to totally defeat that high center of gravity feel okay also, I love that it's a tricycle. Tricycles are fun, and they definitely give you a, a different feel than a tail dragger, which you would expect to have from a World War II fighter airplane, Warbird. And uh, I'm usually not a big fan of racers, but I actually really like this. And surprisingly, I really liked the Voodoo that came out. And the Voodoo is even bigger than this. But that thing was nuts, and I think we did fly that on 6S. We did, because we used those. We used RC those hacker. RC Hacker batteries. <laughs> so, inside here, I just want to point out one other conflict that we've run into with this plane, and that is, this thing is full, but not trimmed. And that fits right there. Mm -hmm. Guys, it is really tight. So, that being said, very good. And you can see where we marked it. It's right to the edge of here. And just an amazing flight experience. What a great little plane holds its own like you wouldn't suspect for a 1,000 millimeter plane, which is actually 980, I believe. Yes. So really great plane, flies good on the NX-10. We haven't had any issues yet with that. Uh, beyond when we did our transfer from the eight to the 10, we did have some issues with getting everything transferred over. And I think it was just something to do with the way things were copying. Duplicates. And you could only have like 256 models or 260 or 250, 250. models in the transmitter at a time. And because it replicated every time I was copying from one to the next to the next we went from a six to an eight to an eight to a ten and so what happens every time we copied it made a new directory for the nx6 into the nx8 from the nx6 and eight to the eight from the nx6 and the eight and the eight to the nx10 yep and so that's how we figured that out but anyway shouldn't be a problem for most people um i mean 164 models is what we have in here and that's a lot of models but we love doing this stuff and we will keep doing it as long as you guys keep watching the videos. And so we really appreciate you being here with us. We appreciate FMS for working with us on these beautiful planes. They are great planes and they do a good job of making them. But what a gorgeous sunset. What a beautiful environment. It's so nice to be out here doing this, what we love and doing it together. So guys, thanks for giving us the opportunity to do that and help us continue by buying the planes when you like them. And if you don't like this one and you like the P the, you know the p51 voodoo we were talking about in the 1.1 meter or maybe if you want the 1.2 meter i don't care whatever one you love just look at the links down below we have tons of them more generically listed very basic but if you go over to brianphillipsrc.com that's our domain you can sort by type and by brand so it's super easy to get to where you want to be which is usually like hey i want to see the video before i decide to spend 
you know, four or $500 on a plane. Well, this one's not maybe four or $500, but let's say, you know, you're buying a bigger jet and you might be spending seven, 800 bucks. Just follow the links and you will see. You can watch the video, make your own mind up. It's no BS. We're not big on the fastest, cheapest, yellowest, greenest. We don't do that here on Brian Phillips RC. What we do is we fly these things as best as we can in a beautiful environment that's the same every time or similar so that you guys can make a decision on whether or not you think this thing stands on its own two feet or three, depending on the plane. So camera crew has a thought. Can I make a clarification on the racing P51? The yeah. Voodoo is the purple yeah. one. But if you're looking at the Miss America or the blue, there's like four different ones, like yeah, a Dago, Dago Reds. Red. They're all the same. So if you're like, I thought yeah, that was a different yeah. plane. There's, there's four. four. The Voodoo is the purple one. And they're also 100 uh, 10% bigger than this. Mm -hmm. And remember, 10% longer wingspan means that the plane is considerably larger. Okay, so like this is a small plane. Yeah. Make no mistake, you can fit that in just about any car. Yeah. So it's really good and you don't have to take it apart. And if you retract the gear, that's a really good way to make your small plane even smaller. But just keep in mind, four bladed props don't usually nest well on the ground. So I suggest leaving the gear down. Also, if you ever want a trick for getting more planes into your car, whether it's a car, SUV, truck, Get yourself some cheap bean bags. Take about half of the bean filling out, which is just foam. And then you can um, get something with a really soft fabric and you can set these right in there. You can put a bean bag on top, put a second one on top of there. Put a bean bag on top, put another one on top. I usually put one that can have the gear collapse on the bottom of the pile and then I'll throw bean bags on top and then offset so that you miss your tails. It works really nice and it's super fast because when you get to the field, you can just throw the bean bag on the ground, plop the plane right into the bean bag pull the next one out. If they have gear out, you just slam on the asphalt or concrete or whatever, and then you go from there. So all I've got to say is this thing is a winner and you will like it and you will enjoy it if you do buy one. That being said, it is a P39. It's kind of a different look and it's a lesser popular, lesser popular subject. But here on Brian Phillips RC, I have learned with experience and with time, I have come to really appreciate some of the lesser known aircraft. It's really fun to fly them because they fly different. They look different. Every little RC plane that you get is gonna fly slightly different. And sometimes different bad, sometimes different great, sometimes different bad in the wind, but good in the calm. Sometimes better in the clouds and worse in the suns. You know, so it just depends on the circumstances and you will learn that every little plane is gonna give you a slightly different experience. And that's why you end up with 300 of them. <laughs> so anyway guys that's why you need the nx10 as well if you get the eight you'll be happy but you're gonna be happier with the 10 and it's not that much more cash just don't get the six you're gonna run out of uh channels really quick and i don't suggest you do that because of that reason however the six is great it's almost exactly the same platform you're just not gonna have enough channels to do everything you want and by the way the six has a seventh channel but it's only on or off or whatever they i don't they say it's not like a, a full partial yeah, it's like a partial channel, which I don't know. I was able to do everything I needed to with it. So that being said, I still don't suggest you get the six. It's got the smaller battery and it doesn't, I don't even think it came with a lanyard. The it eight did not, does. the eight does. The eight comes with the bigger battery too, but the 10 comes with the extra channels. The extra channels are really what we need. If you're running 8360Ts, you need two extra channels to command and control. AS3X off safe, so mode, and then master gain. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna need 10 channels to do that. And we have run out of channels on our eight, three times. So anyway, we won't run out of channels for a while. And if you really need a lot, you can just get the NX20. Anyway guys, that's all you get for tonight. Great plane, good job, FMS, great transmitter, good job, Spectrum. And by the way, what are we running in this thing? I can't even remember. All I know is I've got an antenna here. And it looks like this one's probably got the reflex is my understanding. But if it doesn't, I'll tell you that right now. And if you guys ever wonder what we used in a particular plane, look no further. Yeah, it's got a reflex, but I can see we have two antennas. So that means that we must have actually done something a little bit more robust. Or maybe we did a lemon. I think it might be a lemon. Here, hold this, please. Mm -hmm. All I'm going to say is this, guys. If you ever want to know what we used in a plane, the best thing to do is run over to Brian Phillips RC and you can check and we have a recommended receiver or you can watch the unbox build radio setup and you can see not only what we used, but exactly how we did it. So if you're returning to the hobby and you just need some help getting on, you know, getting, getting your legs under you, 
We will be here for you. That's what we do. If you're brand new to the hobby, you're just trying to learn, hey, I need somebody to help me make a good decision because I am tempted to buy that P39. Don't buy the P39, it's not a good beginner. Okay, there are easier warbirds that you can get that would be a better fit for a brand new beginner pilot, but it's not this, okay? We're gonna help you with that too. But there's no reason you can't drool over this footage and enjoy it because it's gonna help to spur you in the right direction, which is not sit on the couch and go fly. So anyway, that's all we got for you tonight. Thanks for watching, guys. We love doing this stuff. Thanks for helping us keep doing it.